Mario Monticelli. And this game was played between he on the white pieces and I.A. Horowitz uh, in Syracuse, New York, August 22nd, 1934. Monticelli's name? Or the guy whose name I couldn't pronounce? <laughs> Because the his Monticelli's name is there in the title right below the screen. Today's Grandmaster Mario Monticelli. Um, if you were wondering about the GM whose name I couldn't figure out, it looks like this. Let me just copy and paste. All right. So, this game between Mario Monticelli and the great I.A. Horowitz. And this time an E4 opening. E5, Knight F3, Knight C6, Rai Lopez, Morphe. And this is all pretty standard. And now after Bishop B3, Knight takes e4. Pawn to d4. Pawn to d5. D takes e5 and bishop to e6. Bishop uh, Pawn to c3. Creating a square for this bishop to get a different line of attack since... The A2 G8 diagonal is fairly clogged. And bishop to E7, C5 would have been another nice square for the bishop to get his last piece out of bed. So black right now with a substantial lead in development. White still sitting here with three pieces in bed. Four if you count the queen, but the queen does have influence on the board, so it's not as important. Bishop to e3. And knight to a5. Putting the question to the bishop, probably though heading for c4. Knight to d4. And he went ahead and took the bishop. Now that I'm not sure I understand that capture. Why take this bishop? He's not doing anything. Except if you're worried about him getting to c2 and maybe being an issue. Rot Chop showing some love. Thank you, Rot Chop. Let me take the opportunity of this, uh, these cheer bits to invite and even solicit cheers, subscriptions, and donations to help support this channel. If this channel has benefited you and helped you or you've gained anything from this channel at all, we appreciate any support you can give. I'd like to really focus more on providing education for beginners and inter intermediate players on a more regular basis, but that will require support. So if you are able, we thank you for it. And we thank you for all these hearts showing love. All right, so after the Minor exchange there of pieces. Queen d7. I should say minor trade rather than exchange. Don't want to confuse the beginners. Usually an exchange is when you trade pieces of different value and, in, and if it's equal value, we just call it a trade. Pawn to f5. And here, for those of you who are beginners, notice the pawn left its home square. 
and moved next to the E5 pawn, making F5 eligible for capture by way of en passant. Remember the rules. This pawn was already on the fifth rank, so that could never be captured en passant. But once your pawn gets three steps away from home, one, two, three, and your opponent's pawn moves two steps from home next to your pawn, you can take it on the immediate following move as if he only moved one square en passant. It's not always the best move to play, and keep in mind that just because you can play en passant does not mean you should. One mistake that beginners often make is automatically playing en passant because they can, and after all, you'd never get to play it. So be careful not to just automatically take en passant but you do need to be aware of its availability. DC points out that the E5 pawn is strong in this position, and so en passant would probably be a mistake. Let's look at the evaluation bar, which is at 2.56. Probably white's okay if he takes en passant, but it's not as good as other moves. But look at how I mean, what DC is pointing out is look at how the pawn with other pawns and other pieces control a lot of the squares. And even though this knight is on a very nice square right now, if we attack it, it doesn't have a good square to go to hardly. Okay, there's one safe square, and that's G5. And so taking en passant would not be the best thing in this example. But just look at the evaluation bar and notice that when we take en passant, the evaluation bar still favors white slightly, but not nearly as much as pawn to f3, which was played by Monticelli, today's grandmaster. So thank you for that input, DC. Um, you are correct, and therefore, I authorize you to give yourself a thumbs up. Well done. So knight to g5 is the only safe square for that knight. Knight to d2. Castles kingside. Now pawn to f4. I'm not so sure about that move. Perhaps the idea is, okay, feel free to go back to that outpost, but you're not going to be there long. He did, and he didn't take it, so that wasn't the idea at all. So we call that an outpost when there's no pawn that can drive it away. Rook F to C8. Pawn to G4, trying to undermine that center. Rook back to f8. Knight takes e6. Now we've got some lines opening here. Weakening the center. Queen takes. Queen can be attacked. Pawn can be attacked. Knight to d4 was played, in fact. Queen to g6. Getting in line with the king. So, can't capture that here. Not on my level, says dc. g4. When was that move made? Way back here. Yeah, I kind of... Well, what's not on my level is... <laughs> this move. 
How does he take that pawn? That's pretty bold. What a move. I mean, obviously the knight can just be captured. So this is a knight sacrifice. And the idea is to open the line up and allow the rook to capture. But then when you force the rook away, these pawns, these center pawns are really powerful. So a positional sacrifice, I guess you'd call this. Oh, I didn't even, I overlooked that completely. Okay, so that's the real thing I was missing. That's beautiful. Okay. So that, I guess it had nothing to do with these powerful center pawns. I overlooked this fork. This is a discovered attack. Wow, that is beauty. That's a beauty. I was focused over here when the real focus was on d5. What a three-way fork that is. Now that's what's not on my level. I totally overlooked that. Wow. You can still push that pawn if you want to. I wonder why, why he gave up his queen here. Is that really the best move? Your queen's in danger. Why not just move it somewhere? Can't move it there. Can move it here to b7. Can move it back to d5. Yeah, I don't care for this move by Monticelli here. And neither does the progress bar that makes it three zeros DC says rook takes a a6 is great okay the queen can't be captured the queen cannot be captured because of the back rank weakness rook cannot capture its mate in two moves Three moves, mate and three. But can't he just get a draw here? Is there a perpetual check? What, what was played? Oh, he did. He played queen takes g4. Okay, but now where's the check? Well, there's no immediate check. But can you play queen h3, pinning the pawn, and then play the knight to g3? He didn't play that. He played. Oh, because the knight could be captured, though, in either case. But now you're threatening to capture. Well, you'd have been threatening to capture the rook here as well. And this also attacks the e3 bishop. There's a lot going on here. Queen did take the knight. Queen did take the rook. Bishop blocked. Rook takes f4. And here, Horowitz. Oh my goodness. How in the world does White win this game? Let's see what happened. Okay, we can just take this with the Queen. Oh! It's like take it with the Queen. Let's come back to this in a minute. Let's see how it actually played out. That's back to zero. 
Moving Dutchman, hey there. This is back to zero. Somehow, Black loses this game. We'll come back to that move later. Because I'm wondering why the... I mean, why not capture on A1, but... Bishop F8. Rook E8. Rook F5. Attack the pinned piece. King comes over. King G2. Pawn to G5. Rook to C8. Uh, at what point, Rook F7? I'll have to come back and look. I want to kind of see where this guy went wrong. Well, the progress bar is ever liking white more and more as time goes on. King H5, B3, Bishop to G7, C4, B takes C4, B takes C4, and now these passers are probably going to be the end of black. I just page through the, the game to see how it finished and then we'll go we'll go back and look at those critical points yeah this is this is going to be look at that wow oh and those two pawns are going to be unstoppable. He resigned. All right, let's go back first to DC's move. What At what point were you looking at rook f7 DC? This was an interesting game. Okay, somewhere in here you wanted rook f7. Here, at this point? To defend the, the weak pawns? Is that your idea? Or before that? This is the first place he could have gone to f7, and that's not possible because you have two attackers. So I'm not sure. Oh, for white. Oh, here. Here you wanted to play rook f7 instead of... Um, Rook E1, or was it at even an earlier point than that? Like right here even. Here, you can play Rook F7 now, but you want the bishop, you want the bishop aiming at G7. But can he, can he just play so if you play rook f7, yeah, well you got you got adequate defense here. So perhaps bishop to d6 is okay because you have adequate defense. The evaluation bar says this is dead drawn. I don't want to go back where the evaluation bar was monster in Black's favor, right here. I was saying Queen takes A1. And he played Rook takes Queen. 
So let's look at the line queen takes a1. Yeah, that's the line favored by the evaluation bar. And, okay, if queen takes rook, you've got check, and the king's stuck behind his two pieces. And wherever the queen, the enemy queen moves, it's checkmate, so he can't take the rook. The rook is not able to be captured. So this is just winning for black. Remember this pattern, guys. <laughs> a bishop or a queen on this diagonal is going to win. So in one move, what a... I, and what move number was this? It was move 28, so it could not have been a time trouble issue. So Horowitz just missed the winning move. That's all there is to it. He simply missed the winning move. <laughs> 